Evening, Mikey. How's the newspaper racket? No. How's the poker racket? Rotten. Care for a drink? No, thanks. I'm not much for drinking when I'm working. You know, we don't care much about publicity here. You needn't worry. I'm not offering you any. Where's Lillian? Why? I want to see her. Say, what's the matter with you? There's no law against me seeing you, is there? Certainly not. She's got a chemistry examination tomorrow. She's studying for it. I'll only keep her a few minutes. Is she in one of the back room? Yeah. Second door to the right. Thanks. Say, are you troubled with indigestion? No. I'm a little sweetheart. I don't know. Have you got one? You bet. One of the best. And she's looking very beautiful. Say, Lily, what's the matter with Blackie? Why? I don't know. He acted very hostile when I told him I wanted to see you. Perhaps it's your imagination. Listen, Precious. I'm doping up a story about college girls working their way through school. I found one who sells magazines. And I was thinking I'd like to use Miss Lillian Vaughn, who's working her way through college by singing in a nightclub. Sorry, Bill, it's out. Why? Well, for one thing, I have a lot of friends at college. Some of them know I sing here, and some of them don't. Well, I won't mention the Lido. But you'll have to mention my name. Oh, I'd have to do that, and I'd have to have a picture. You take a blame sweet picture, you know that. Flattery won't get you anywhere, Bill. I'd rather you wouldn't say anything about it. Listen, sweet. Is anything wrong? Why, of course not, Bill. I don't believe you. You talk too fast, lady. Has Blackie been annoying you? Blackie's one of my very best friends. Well, you might take better. He's nothing but a tin horn gambler. I told you he was one of my best friends, didn't I? I'm sorry. I wish there was something I could do for you. You can. Drive me over to the campus. All right. I'll get my hat and coat. Meet me outside. In a hurry? Yes, I'd like to be there by 9.15. We'll be there at 9. Are you meeting someone? Yes. Malcolm Jannings? Uh-huh. Pick out the rummiest friend. What's the matter with Mal? Oh, he's no good. We brought him all the way out here from Minnesota for the track team. They got him a soft job bringing the chimes from the Campanile. And what's he done? Down every night, gambling Don't you think, think you said enough against my friends? Okay, I'll pipe down. Sorry, I could drive you over to Campanile, but you know the campus gates are closed after 9 o'clock. Want me to wait for you here, Charlie? No. Foolish question. Well, I'm going over to the daily office for a little while. Listen, I'll be glad to drive you back to Lido if you want. No, I won't bother you anymore. I'll sit here until about 9.15 and then I'll walk over. Well, be a good girl. I'll do my best, darling. Well, there was a shot. So I heard. Well, somebody had to call the police. 
The police have been called. How could they? It just happened. Well, yeah, someone will call. Well, I mean, I'll call. Call. Just shot up there. They don't have to. Well, well, Bill. Where'd you come from? I didn't come from any place. I was here. What's the lowdown? Well, the chimes stopped ringing all of a sudden. There was a silence and then a shot. From the tower? Yes. And you were right here. Not 20 feet away. And no one came down? Not a soul. The elevator stopped. This, this door here to the stairs hasn't been opened. Megs, run over to the office superintendent and get the key. Right. You're hey. sure no one came down? Absolutely. Whoever's up there must still be there. There's no other way down. Anyone know who plays the chimes? Yeah, a fellow by the name of Malcolm Jennings. You know, the sprinter. Oh, heard him. Not much good, was he? He couldn't run an errand. Wait a minute, then I'll be right back. All right, now, boys, kids around here. Listen, sweet, what do you know about this? Not a thing, Bill. What'd you do when I left you? I stayed in the car for about five minutes, and then I started to walk over here. Did you hear that shot? Of course I did. Any suspicion? No. Could I go up with the police? Oh, you're a crazy girl. I'm not. I want to go. If anything has happened to Mel, I, I don't know what I'll do. You think a lot of that guy, don't you? Now, listen, if you've got any brains that pretty little head of yours, you'll stay out of this. It's a police case, and you don't want to get mixed up in it, do you? Of course I don't, but... Never I... mind no buts about it. You stay out. Well, here comes next with the keys. I'm going up with him now. Stay right here. I'll be right here. back. Oh, hey. All right. Megs, you and Alice stay here and keep the crowd back. Don't let anybody in or out. Get it? Yes, yes sir. All right. Come on, Larmer. Bill, if you want to, come on. Just a plain case of suicide. Sure. But where's the gun? Right through the left temple. Looks like a 32. Say, ever see him play baseball or tennis? Oh, I get you. He was right-handed. No powder burns. Plain case of murder. Those buildings aren't anywhere near tall enough to reach over this balustrade with a rifle. Those hills are high enough, but they're too far away. Then the guy that did it must be somewhere about. You swear nobody came down. And we didn't meet anybody coming up. He's either up in there or hiding in the elevator shaft. It's a hiding place. The belfry is out. And maybe he had a parachute. He could drop over the side of this rail here. Sure. Nobody'd see him. Not... Well, maybe he used the roof. Well, if he did, where is it? Do you suppose he can get up on the roof of the tower? Yeah, he might have a gang of carpenters built him a scaffold. How about the elevator shaft? No, he left there. We won't find anyone. Where do you suppose he could go? The guy couldn't come up here and knock this bird over and just vanish into thin air. I don't get it. That's all. I don't get it. So who do you suppose did it, Chief? I don't care who did it now. Show me how he did it, and I'll tell you who did it. Well, it just ain't possible. That's all. It just ain't possible. Captain. Well, this man there runs the elevator. He lives near here. He heard the shot, and he came right over. You take Jennings up on top tonight? No, sir. I make my last trip at 8 o'clock. He always walks. Who'd you take up on your last trip? Uh, two ladies and a man. Say, Bill, give us the load on, will you? Yeah, Ask Bill. Larmer. He's got all the dope. Mr. Larmer. Bad news, Lillian. Is he dead? Yeah. Shot through the temple. Oh, who killed him, Bill? All I know is he was murdered. Whoever did it got away. Got away? Why, that's impossible. Nobody left there after the shot. Be here, Lillian. You know more about this than you're passing out. What makes you say that? I don't know. Ever since I stepped into the club tonight, the way Blackie acted, your nervousness, the whole business, I just knew something was going to happen. If you knew something was going to happen, you knew more than I did. Pretty cool, aren't you? Is there any reason why I shouldn't be? All right, all right. Let it go at that.
Anything wrong, Bill? Oh, nothing connected with the case. Where to now? Tell the Kai house. Why are you fellas in charge? Well? I suppose you could say I'm in charge. I'm house manager. You're the man I want to see. Come on inside. Let you stay out. Hey, what's up? All the trouble now. Hear anything about what happened to Campanelli tonight? Yes. One of the brothers called up. Who killed him, Captain? I'm not offering an opinion yet. Suppose uh, you tell me what you know about Janice. Well, one of our alumni suggested we urge Janice to come here, find him a job and all that. Well, Jennings arrived. We got him a job as Chime Master. He had a fair knowledge of music. Well, anyway, he went out for track. It proved a big disappointment. Yes, yes, let's get to the man himself. Well, he was a likable chap, good mixer, good company. But he hadn't any... Well, he lacked the cultural background a college man should have. In your opinion, had he ever been to college before? I don't think he's had more than two years of high school. Any parents, relatives? He never mentioned any. Did he go out much? Quite a bit. Very often he stayed away all night. Who were his friends? I haven't any idea. How about girls? I don't believe he was greatly interested in women. When did you have your last house party? About ten days ago. Who'd he bring? Come on, come on. You're wasting time. I want to know. He bought Ann Michaels. Oh. Did he rush her much? Yes, quite a bit. What kind of a girl is she? She's a very charming young lady. Where'd she live? Number 12, Addison Way. Sorority house, huh? No. Does she belong to a sorority? No. Why not? Perhaps you better ask her. Oh. Don't worry, my boy. I will. Larmer, see that he doesn't get to a telephone. I want to surprise her. Okay, see? I get you. Sit down, young fella. What did you think about this fellow Wilson? I gather he hated Mal Jennings worse than poison, for one thing. He got a crush on Ann Michaels for another. That's enough. Plenty. Michaels, I'm Captain Kine of the police department. This is Mr. Barton with the Times Star. How do you do? I'd like to talk to you a minute. Please come in. Michael. Thank you. Why don't you live in one of the sorority houses? Because I prefer to live alone. Oh. Don't you think you had better tell me the purpose of your visit? Mal Jennings was murdered about an hour ago. Murdered? Mal? Oh, it's horrible. Friend of yours, was he? Yes. Been out to dances with him? Just once or twice. Ever jealous of him? I think you're making a mistake in our relations, Captain. Why, Mal was no more to me than a dozen other men. Well, well, well. Tell me this. When did you first learn he'd been killed? Didn't you just tell me yourself? I said, when did you first learn he'd been killed? When you told me. You took it pretty cool, didn't you? What did you expect me to do? Go into hysterics or something? Miss Michaels, where were you this evening? Particularly around 9 o'clock. I had an 8 o'clock seminar in English tonight in Baltic Hall. I guess I left there about 2 minutes to 9. And I happened to meet Hawley. Dr. C. Edson Hawley? Yes, I have a class in chemistry with him. We walked out the west gate together and his car was parked there, so he drove me home. You got into Dr. Hawley's car about six or seven minutes after nine. Yes. Drive straight home? The clock on the table there said exactly 20 minutes after nine when I came in. Clock keeps pretty good time. 
Did Dr. Hawley come up to your apartment with you? Certainly not. How long did you talk out front? I merely thanked him and came upstairs. Of course you realize, Miss Michaels, that if you know anything, now's the time to spill it. I told you, Captain, I know nothing. Very well. Don't tell me she don't know something. And how do you figure that swell apartment? Well, maybe she has money. There's no law against it. And that meeting with Holly. Boy, I'd love to get something on that bird. Say, I forgot my hat. Wait for me in the car, will you? Sure. I'm going over to the faculty club. You want to trade along? Well, I'll only be a minute. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. I left my hat. I'll get it for you. I said I'd get it for you. I'll get it myself. Do you realize you forced your way into my apartment? Ah, uh, Clark, what do you want? Well, it didn't take you long to get here, did it? I wish you'd mind your own business, Bill. Perhaps this is my business. You've no right to drag me into this mess. You're already in it, Lillian. That's not true, Bill. All right, I'm wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Anyway, I want to see you later. Where'll you be? Oh, I may be home. I may be at the club. You can look for me. All right. I'll find you. A most unpleasant business, isn't it? There must have been dozens of people around the company when it happened. I was there myself, and no one came out of the tower. Hmm, lucky boy. The paper says that Jennings couldn't have killed himself. Did you happen to know him, Dr. Holly? He was in my class in chemistry. A poor student. I was about ready to drop him. Is Miss Ann Michaels in the class, too? See here, Captain. Surely you're not intimating that Miss Michaels is involved in the case. Just talk to this Ann Michaels. I'll bet my star she held out on me. Miss Michaels did know Jenny, and I believe went out with him now and then. But as far as her being in any way, either willingly or inadvertently involved in the murder, why, it's absurd. Say, so you seem to think a lot of this, Ann Michaels. You're ready to take a great deal for granted, Mr. Kyle. I suppose Miss Michaels told you that I drove her home. Yes. I did drive her home. But if you assume that my meeting with her was anything but accidental, you're wrong. Miss Michaels means no more to me than any other girl in my class. Is there anything else, Captain? No. I just want to know where she was when Johnny was shot. We drove to her home slowly. I dare say any number of witnesses could be found who saw us. That's not necessary. Not now, anyhow. Coming, Bill? Oh, my car's only a block from here. I might as well pick it up while I'm out this way. Hmm. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. The captain's a bit worked up, isn't he, Bill? Well, who wouldn't be? First, an impossible murder. And second, how'd he get away? I'm not good at guessing. You'd like to tackle this case, wouldn't you, Dr. Holly? Frankly, yes. Well, why don't you? I haven't been asked to. Well, is that necessary? I have no more right to investigate this affair than any other private citizen. Oh, but you're a well-known criminologist. Personally interested, Bill? Professionally interested, Doc. <laughs> well, when the time comes when you can prove to me that Captain Kine is bungling things, perhaps I shall take it. It might not be long. Good night. Good night. Hello, Lillian. Well. Thanks. Listen, kid. You know you can trust me, don't you? I think so. You know you can. You know I'm all for you, too, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Come in. I'm crazy about you. Dirty shame to interrupt you like this, Bill. Oh, what a swell friend you turned out to be. Oh, listen, darling, I didn't have... Now, children, be good, be good. You know where you can go. 
Now, I want to ask the young lady some questions, and while I'm asking them, I want you to keep your trap shut. I may or may not. What do you think of that? I may bust you one in the jaw. You think twice before you do. You want me to put the bracelets on him, Chief? No, go ahead and search the apartment. Now, you two sit down. I want to ask some questions. I don't want to quarrel with you, Bill. You did me a good turn tonight. I don't get it. You wouldn't. You don't have to be so upstage, Miss Moyn. Oh, come on, Ed. Quit stalling and get to the point. I will. When you left the club after talking to Holly, I put a tail on you. On me? Yeah. Going back to that hat didn't fool me any. <laughs> I don't blame you for being burned up. Why should you want me tailed? Because you knew something about this case that I didn't. Read this. Found it in Jennings' pocket a while ago. I suppose you've decided who wrote it. When I found that note, I hadn't the slightest idea who Lillian was. But when you visited here, I put two and two together, and nice reasoning for a flatfoot, eh, Bill? <laughs> beautiful, kind, beautiful. <laughs> but how do you know this Lillian's the one that wrote that note? Want to see? I'm not a handwriting expert, and I'm sure you're not. I don't think a handwriting expert is necessary, is it, Miss Boyd? If you're asking if I wrote that note, the answer is yes. Now, want to sit down and talk to me a while? I don't want to. I suppose I shall have to. You don't have to say a word, Lily. Suppose, Miss Boyd, you tell me exactly what your relations were with this man. Relations. Oh, I didn't mean that. Just how well did you know Miles Jennings? He's a casual friend. And you're accustomed to writing notes like this to casual friends? Well, if I wanted to see a man, I, I'd be very likely to write and ask him to meet me. What do you want to see him about? That's my business. That attitude won't get you anywhere. What makes you think I want to get anywhere? Don't you want to get out from under suspicion? Are you telling me that I'm suspected of murdering Mal Jennings? Right. Miss Boyne, where were you at 9 o'clock tonight? Fly to him if you want to, darling. I'll back you up. I was in Bill's car in front of Charlie's place. Did you know she had a date with Jennings? Yes, I knew that. Funny, Bill, you didn't tell me anything about it. Miss Boyne, where were you immediately after 9 o'clock? I sat in the car until a few minutes after 9. And I walked around the block and went over to the Campanile. I was there when I heard the shot. Where was Bill? You'll have to ask him. Where were you, Bill? Where do you suppose I was? I was at the top of the Campanile. I used a 32 caliber revolver. The motive was jealousy. After committing the crime, I jumped over the side and landed in a fireman's net. Anything else you want to know? I still want to know where you were at 10 minutes after 9. I left Lillian in the car at 9 o'clock. I walked over to the campus daily, stayed there a while in the office, and then I started back. Two empty cartridges, Captain. The other four chambers are loaded. Well, well. Where'd you find it? Shuffling it in the dressing room. In the bottom drawer underneath a pile of underwear. 32 caliber. Same kind of a gun Jennings was killed with. You don't know that gun was the one that killed Jennings? No, we'll find out. As soon as a bullet fired from this gun is compared with one taken from the body. Miss Boyne, is this your gun? Yeah. When did you fire it last? I've never fired it. That gun was given to me. I put it in my drawer, and I never touched it again. It was fully loaded when it was given to you? I have every reason to believe that it was. Who gave it to you? My father. Why? My home's in Nevada. My father, a rancher, was a bit worried about my being alone here without any protection. That was his idea of protection. I don't even know how to fire it. Did you say you were brought up on a ranch? Yes. And you never even learned how to fire a six-shooter? No. I've never learned anything about any kind of a gun. <laughs> well, that'll be about all for tonight. Let me warn you. Don't try and leave the city. Listen, darling. All right. No, 
No hard feelings, Annabelle. No. Well, I guess I'll go home. I've got a headache. If you went home an hour ago, you wouldn't have a headache. I'll go jump in the lake. I'll see you in the morning. All right. there to do the shooting. Or did they, Bill? Absolutely. Someone was there and shot him. How'd he get away then? Well, he couldn't have got away. Oh, you think he's still there, eh? Oh, he couldn't still be there. All right, go ahead and call me crazy. I have plenty of company on the police force. But Dr. Hawley isn't going to handle a case, is he? Not unless he gets someone to retain him. That's good stuff about that boy and girl. That gun. Probably no connection with the case. Did you meet her? Yes. Good looking? She's swell. Listen, Grimes, I want to be taken off the police beat and devote all my time to this case. All right, Bill. The keys to the city are yours. Good luck. Thanks. Hey, Spud. Yeah. Why give you a phone number? I'll be there about an hour. If anything breaks on a Janning's case, give me a ring, will you? Okay. Hey, and keep that number under your hat, too. Right. Good morning. Did I get you up? Oh, I've been up for some time. May I come in? If you wish. There doesn't seem to be any law against men crashing into my apartment. You know, if you're going to keep on treating me like a heel, maybe you'll tell me why. Oh, listen, Lillian, break down. Please don't try to make love to me, Bill. Well, who the dickens is trying to make love? All I want you to do is act human. How did you know I was at Anne's? Well, I saw your purse on the table and I came back to make sure. What difference does it make if I was there? Anne's a very dear friend of mine. And I suppose your visit had nothing to do with what happened earlier in the evening. Oh, we did talk about Mal Jannings, if that's what you mean. Lillian, what about that gun? Bill, you know just as much about it as I do. I told Mr. Kine all there is to tell about it. Is there a chance it was used last night? Are you here for an interview for your paper, or did you come hoping I confessed to the murder? Listen, you crazy little fool, this is serious. It's gone far enough. I want to help you. I don't need your help. Hello? Yes? Just a minute. For you, Bill. You were pretty sure I got you in, weren't you? Oh, a little bit. Hello. Say, Bill, there's been another murder. What? Another murder? Who? Don't know. The call just came in. 201 Bell Building. Do you want me to go over there? No, no. Stay where you are. I'm on my way. Bill, who? I don't know, Lillian. I've got to run. Bill! Bill! you are from the police? Well? Who's the gentleman on the floor? Are you a policeman? No, no, I'm from the Times Star. Oh. Well, I have nothing to say until the police arrive. Well, you better start talking, lady. Here they are. Suppose you happen to be strolling by this time, huh? Something like that. You're too smart. Well, I was only four blocks from here when Spud gave me the call. Is it my fault I got here ahead of you? Who is he? Mr. James Smythe. And who are you? Miss Hilda Lund, secretary to Mr. Smythe and Mr. Brock. Suppose you tell us all about it. Well, I opened the office as usual, then I came in here. 
I came upon the body of Mr. Smythe, I knew at once he was dead. I immediately telephoned the police, and I haven't touched anything. See anything of a gun? I saw nothing except what's before you right now. Not suicide. Looks to me like he was shot with a 32, same as the other fellow. Bullet went in the left, came out behind the right ear. Chief! Thirty-two, all right. Might get the corner, fellas. All right. Miss Lund, you mind stepping in the other room? I have a few questions. Miss Lund, you any idea who killed your employer? Yes. Who? By a gambler named Blackie Atwater. Larmer? Find out when Smythe was last seen alive. Get the elevator operator, scrub woman, the tenants on this floor, clerks in the candy shop on the ground floor. Get all the information you can. Say, Chief, about this Atwater. I know that boy. He hangs out at the Lido. Well, I can just... Have a mind do as I told you. Yes, sir. Sit down. Miss Lund, perhaps you can tell me why you suspect this man Atwater of killing Mr. Smythe. Mm, I heard him threaten to kill him if he didn't. Uh... Well, that was all that I heard. What was all that you heard? Just what I told you. This Atwater came to the office day before yesterday, and he was very angry when I told him Mr. Smythe was busy. Snapped at me in the most ungentlemanly way. You snapped at you, huh? Yes. Anyway, when Miss Smythe was free, this Atwater, he went in and... I went to the door and listened. Yes? I heard him say, why, you dirty. I can't repeat what I heard. did not necessary. What are they quarreling about? Well, I don't know. I didn't hear enough of the conversation. Come, come. I want to know. What was it? Gambling debts, perhaps? I don't know. Where'd he live? At the Bellevue Hotel, just around the block. The coroner will be here in a few minutes to take the body. You better look through your files. Let me know if anything is missing. Oh, yes. Where is his partner, Mr. Brock? Mr. Smythe received a telegram from Mr. Brock yesterday morning, saying that he'd be in this morning on the Statesman. He'd like to have a car at the station to meet him. 10.20 now. That gives me 15 minutes. Why don't I go with you? Meet Brock? Yes. Suit yourself. Ed. Huh. How much do you think she held out on you? Plenty. Yes, sir. Keep yourself away from the pound. I may want to ask you some more questions. Yes, sir. You get anything out of him? As far as I can learn, he knew nothing about the murderers. Oh, come on, you got something. Come on, kick in, Ed. What do you got? He established an airtight alibi. Stayed in the washroom all night. Train sick. Conductor and porter both swear to his story. Don't you think he deliberately manufactured that alibi? No. What do you know about the reputation of these guys? Oh, cheap little shysters. They'll take anything from bootleggers to shitty divorces. You know, that sort of thing. Oh. Send him in. Come in, Wilson. Captain, I believe I've learned something you'd like to know. Right, shoot. Well, two of my fraternity brothers, who wish to keep their identity as secret as possible, they're in training. We're out with Mal Jennings Thursday night. Now you're going to tell me these two men heard Jennings quarreling with a certain party, right? Well, how did you know? Guessed it. And the certain party is a gambler named Blackie Atwater. Yes. I believe this Blackie threatened Jennings' life. Exactly. Thanks very much. Anything else? No. That's all. Are you going to pick up that water? I've already given the order. That for publication? For obvious reasons, keep it to yourself, will you? Chief, hey, Chief, I've just been over talking to the night clerk over Smythe's hotel. He tells me that Smythe received a phone call about 10 minutes to 12. And the clerk have nothing to do, he's sort of listening in well. What'd he hear? 
Well, he heard a party asked Smart to come over his office right away. Said they couldn't wait until morning. Did the party that called give any name? Said it was a woman. It was Lillian Vaughn. Well, well. Hmm. Did Smythe leave right away? Well, he left a few minutes after 12. Oh, the coroner sent that over. Said they took it out of Jennings. J for Jennings, huh? Yeah. S for Smythe and B for Boyne. Shot this one into a bucket of sand out of the gun we found in her apartment. See here, Ed, you're all wrong. That call came for Smythe around 12 o'clock. And at 12 exactly, I was walking up the steps to Lillian's apartment. And I stayed there until you two guys came busting in. Sure you haven't set your watch since last night? What I've just told you, I'd swear to on any witness stand. Don't doubt your word, Bill. But that gun... That gun was in her apartment from 12 until you took it away with you. And Smythe couldn't have been killed with that gun. Absolutely impossible. All right, Bill, we'll see. Wait till we photograph these slugs. Come in. Hey, Bill, the office wants you on the phone. Thanks. Mind if I use your phone, Ed? Go ahead. No, no. Listen, I got him on the booth out here. Better take it in the booth, Bill. you'd like to know that I'm investigating the Jennings case. Well, I'm glad you've thrown your hat in the ring at last. The president of the university threw it in for me. Bill, you know how I stand with the police. They probably won't cooperate with me. I'm a little late in getting started, and I'd like to ask you a few questions. Glad to help you. I'll be right over, doctor. What kind of alarm I got? One of the dicks just brought in Smythe and Jennings fingerprints, and they're in there checking them now. Kind's got a hunch that one of them may be an ex-con or something. Listen, Spike. Did you see Kind take anything out of that top drawer? He never even touched it. Bill, you can't do that. No? Watch me. Oh, gee, Bill, Captain Kind will freeze you for this. Where'd you get those bullets? Stole them. Stole them? You must be crazy. Those bullets are evidence of the most important kind. If you get caught, it might mean a term in prison. Yeah, I know that. But I had to find out if they were all fired from the same gun. We'll know that just as soon as I can check the rifling. The old man's wild. Say, what are you going to do about it? Does he know who got him? Well, he has suspicions, and he's not a bit backward about voicing them either. Well, there's nothing to do but beard the lion and his well-known dad. Come on, give me more support, will you? <laughs> Not me, fella. But tell the boys I died fighting. I'll tell them you died talking. Oh, it's you, huh? In the flesh, not a picture. Anything new, Ed? Yeah, in about two minutes, there's going to be a new murder. Oh, maybe I'd better phone the office. That's enough kidding. Where are those slugs? What slugs? You know what slugs. Where are they? Well, the last time I saw them, you put them in the top drawer. Oh, here they are, right under these papers. Just where you left them. Better put them in the safe. Think you're smart, don't you? I don't know what you're driving at. I had a hunch these slugs would check. If they don't, I know you switched them on. You know very well Smythe couldn't have been killed with that gun while it was in Lillian's apartment. You got a crush on this girl. And you'd swear your life away to protect her, wouldn't you? More than a crush, yeah. In love with her. Huh. huh. Where'd you take those slugs when you took them out? Dr. Holly. The check? Yes. All three of them? Have to bring her in. Sorry, Bill. You're taking this pretty much to heart, Bill. Who wouldn't? Don't jump at conclusions. The girl probably had nothing to do with the actual killings. Certainly she had nothing to do with the actual killing. But she's mixed up in it, Bill. Oh, what's the use? There's nothing logical about the whole case. Not much, I'll admit. Then you'll have a sweet time getting a conviction without more evidence than you've got now. Let me tell you something. I'll have a lot more evidence than I've got now before I even try for an indictment. You'll need it. Have to excuse me now, Bill. I've got some work to do. Where are you going? See Lillian Boyne? She's home, I'm going to see her. Better tell her not to take a run out, Potter. She wouldn't, even if I asked her to.
면 돼요. 
What does this man add water to you? A very good friend. Nothing more? Nothing more. Relation? No. Sweetheart? Certainly not. I met him about a year ago, just before I went into the club. As a matter of fact, he got me my job. And Jannings? I met him about three months ago. In fact, you met him when he first came here to college, didn't you? Yes. He was in my chemistry class. Miss Voin, just what kind of legal work did Smythe and Brock do for you? I never met Mr. Smythe or Mr. Brock. Sure? Quite. And yet, just before midnight, you phoned Smythe to meet you in his office, didn't you? Lillian, you don't have to answer a single question if you don't want to. Now, Miss Voin, I don't want to put you in jail. I'm doing my best to give you a chance to get out of this. Come now. You must know something about these murders you haven't told. I know nothing whatever about them. But that phone call, you know something about that, don't you? Or do you? Which is it? All right. Have it your own way. You leave nothing for me to do but place you under arrest. Oh, wait a minute, Ed. You're going too far. You can't arrest her without a warrant. I searched her apartment without a warrant. Well, that was different. If you arrest her now without a warrant and can't make the charges stick, you'll be in hot water. I don't mind being in hot water. Murder. You've charged her with murder? Yes. Sure. Sure, you cops have to do something to save your face. So you pick on an innocent girl. Innocent? Why, she had no more to do with those murders than you did. I'm not so sure of that. All right. Go ahead. Drag her off to jail. Hold her without bail and see how much good it'll do you. I'll have her out before night. Get me state 4705. Well, I'll get your things. You're going with me. City desk. Oh, Grimes? Well, get this. Here's a flash for your final. Lillian Vaughn has been served with a warrant charging murder. The gun was found in her apartment last night, according to Captain Kine. Any evidence besides that? No, the old fool hasn't got a leg to stand on. What? Well, I know because I was in her apartment last night. What do you think I was doing? Interviewing her, of course. Now, listen. I want you to get Bailey, the paper's attorney. The Time Star's going to the bat for this girl. How do you know she's innocent? Well, take my word for it. I've never let you down before. I'm right, and I'm going to prove it. Oh, thanks, Grind. I'll be in later. I wait for Lorimer. I'll drive you down in my car. We'll wait for Lorimer. If you didn't hear in a few minutes, we'll send for the wagon. Sure, that's right. Drag her down there like she was a common drunk. Common drunks are no worse than common murderers, are they? Stop it! Stop calling me a... Oh, that's all right, Joe. <laughs> Don't pay attention to him. You're trying to bait you. I'm not a murderer. <laughs> of course you're not. I know it, and so does Ed. Just trying to pull a fast one. See, now what? Well, that's what put it over on me. I was rolling down the main drag about 40 miles an hour when he piled out, and he rolled over about 20 times. Before I could get the car stopped, he was gone. Well, you big fathead. Well... <laughs> Well, William, glad you came. I, uh, I just identified some lint. Lint? Yes, from the bottom of Jennings' trousers. Did you ever notice the color of the rug in Brock and Smythe's office? Yeah. It's, uh, it's a header, isn't it? Exactly. Jennings was in that office recently. What else did you find? I'm looking at some dust from the floor where Jennings was found. And I also found and photographed a woman's footprints in the company they stared. Is that unusual? In this case, yes. Those stairs are swept every day. And that footprint was superimposed on one of Jennings's. This woman went up and did not come down. What about the elevator? The elevator had stopped running. From this footprint and other evidence that I have found, I'm convinced that it was a woman who killed Jennings and Smythe. Find anything else? I'm not ready to make anything public just yet. Doctor, what woman do you suspect? There were only three women involved in the case. It was one of them. Uh, pardon me, I'm, I'm Brock. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Brock. What can I do for you? Why, I want to talk to you. Yes? About Jim Smythe. Oh, yes. Uh, please come in. Why, 
I'd like to talk to you alone. Very well, come into my office. Oh, excuse me a moment, Bill. Pierced his heart. He never moved after he fell. I had a hunch something like this was going to happen. Gee, when I heard that shot, I thought you were a goner. Oh, why did the fool have to pick up my office to kill himself? The whole thing's going to be a mess. Publicity. People will flock up here. Morbidly curious people. And they'll do a lot of talking. Oh, don't touch the gun or the body bill. Leave everything just as it is. All right, Doctor. Oh, hello. This is Dr. Hawley. Please come immediately. Mr. Brock has just killed himself in my office. Yes, thank you. Oh, uh, shall we go into the laboratory? I don't imagine we'll be bothered until the police get here. The building is usually deserted at this time of the day. Your last edition got a press? Yes. As long as anything's happening on this case, I've got to stay on the job. Wish things would quiet down. <laughs> I wish they'd quieted down 15 minutes ago. Oh. The heartbeat of a house fly. Flew away. I want some more. Oh, that's funny. Oh, I let those flat feet hurry up. Oh, Captain. Hey, doctor. Just happened to be on the spot again, Bill. Well, I was in the next room. I wish I had your faculty being around when these things take place. What happened, Doctor? Well, Brock came and insisted on talking to me alone. He was very nervous and right away demanded to know who had killed his partner. Afraid that whoever killed Smyre might kill him, huh? Yes, I took it that way. He was half hysterical as he accused me of holding out on him. I finally got a little bit hot under the collar myself. I told him he'd have to leave my office. He jumped up from his chair and cried, all right, I leave. Before I had time to realize what was in his mind, he pulled a gun from his pocket, held it to his side. I shouted at him hoping to startle him into pausing for a moment. But he pulled the trigger, fell instantly, and never moved. Must have been afraid of the police. Tied up pretty tight of those other murders. He and his partner both ex-cons. Is that so? Hmm. Served time in Joliet and Elmira. Both times blackmail. We have a motive to work on now. Have you decided that Brock killed both Smythe and Jannings? Hmm. Don't you remember that Atwater threatened to kill both of them? Sure, I remember that. We have the trains and roads watched. Blackie can't get out of this town. Well, if he could get out of that Campanile, he can get out of this town, all right. Maybe. You're glad Blackie got away, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't you be if he was a friend of yours and was kind to you? I suppose I would. But I haven't forgotten he tried to shoot me. He wouldn't have done that, Bill. How do you know he wouldn't? Because he knows that I like you. Lillian. Why didn't you tell me that Ann Michaels and Malcolm Jennings were married? How did you know that? Captain Kine found a wedding ring and a marriage license in her apartment. It wasn't my secret, Bill. I promised Ann I wouldn't tell anyone. Why did she want a marriage kept secret? You see, Bill, shortly after she married Mal, she realized that she'd made a mistake. She was going to have it annulled after the semester was over. Oh. Listen, Dan. You know, I might be able to help you more if you'd start in by telling me. Why you made that date to meet Smythe in his office last night? I didn't. You told Captain Kine you did. Oh, I just did that to protect Anne. Did she use your name and phone Smythe? Yes. 
Why didn't she give her own name? She tried to see Smythe several times and he wouldn't see her. What'd she want to see him about? Smythe was Mal's attorney. Why'd you write that note to Mal asking him to meet you? I wanted to see if I couldn't persuade him to be kinder to Anne. He was treating her terribly. Where does Blackie Atwater come in this? Why do you want to know that, Bill? Because I have to, Lillian. Where does Blackie Atwater come in? Miss, you want it in Judge Beasley's office. Captain Kine, I insist that you establish a reasonable possibility of guilt. Show me how this young woman could have shot Malcolm Jennings at the top of the Campanile and then made her escape without being seen by dozens of people who were gathered around the base. Show me that, and I'll deny this writ. Well, there's the trade bullets. I didn't ask you anything about that. I asked you to show me how this young woman could have committed the crime in question. If you can't, then I shall have to release the prisoner. Well, I... Uh, and I shall dismiss the warrant. You win. Thank you very much, Judge. Don't fight me. Miss Boyne, let me be the first to congratulate you. Thank you. I guess you know how much we appreciate what you did for us, Bailey. Thanks. If you ever need me again, look me up. Now, Lillian, I guess you know you can trust me, don't you? Yes, I do, Bill. And the next time I ask you a question, you... Listen, dear, can you get home all right? Yeah, sure. I've got to get a story. I'll be up a little later. Wait for me there, will you? Yes, I'll listen. Good evening, Sergeant. Is the captain in? I've come to give myself up. Got a gun? Come on, Miss. Oh, come on, get moving. Get in. Hey, Chief, got a visitor. I understand you wanted to see me, Captain. Yeah. Sit down, Anwater. Sit down. Let's see. You broke away from Lorimer this afternoon, didn't you? Yes, and I just now walked in and gave myself up. Hmm. You might explain yourself. I didn't care to be arrested this afternoon. Why? Well, I thought you might check up on the fingerprints and find I'd served time in San Quentin. And I didn't want that made public. Why not? I didn't want my right name to get out. What is your right name? Michaels. Michaels? Yeah. Anne's father. Oh, you are. I believe that to protect her name and keep her friends from finding out that her father was a convict, you risked your life by diving out of that car. You may. I wanted to personally see her on board a boat bound for Europe. That's where she is right now. Atwater, did you kill Jennings? If I did, do you think I'd be in here right now? You threatened him a few days ago. What is the argument about? About the way he was treating my daughter. I had information that he was cooking up some sort of a plot to ruin her reputation. He and those two shysters. Is that why you threatened to kill Smythe? If I had threatened to kill him, that would have been the reason. Mm. Your daughter went around with other men, although married to Mal Jennings, I believe. She was very popular on the campus. No one knew of a marriage. They weren't living together. What'd you find out about Wilson? Uh, uh, it's perfect. What's perfect? The alibi. He said he was down to Paternity House all evening. More than a half a dozen guys to prove it. You have any money? Well, he, he drives a big head roaster. That wouldn't indicate he's rich enough to be blackmailed. Say, you know, Captain? In spite of his alibi, I've always suspected that wasn't enough for Oh, sit down, Sergeant, sit down. Take a load off your feet. Anyone else interested in your daughter particularly? Who had money? Not that I know of. Where are you going, Bill? I'm going over to the office. I've heard enough to make the paper want to get out on extra. Hello, Doc. Oh, it's you, Bill. Well, what's on your mind? A whole lot of things. A whole lot of things, Doc. I wanted to talk them over with you. I'm pretty busy just now, Bill. Are you? Surely you're not too busy. What are you driving at? I'll tell you in a minute. 
Let's sit down now. I got it all doped out. To put up, Bill. Now, the man who killed Jennings escaped from the Campanina. Oh, I see. Yep. Here are the facts as I have them taken. Number one. Nobody left the Campanile between the time the shot was fired and the time I started up the stairs with Captain Kine. So Jannings must have been killed before the shot was heard. Probably before nine o'clock. If he wasn't, the murderer couldn't have escaped. Got it so far? Second, the chimes were not rung last night. That's all very well, Bill. There are plenty of people who heard those chimes. You yourself, in fact. We only thought we heard them. Are you following me, Doc? No. Someone hung a microphone in a window around here and made an electrical transcription of those chimes. Are you listening? I'm listening. Got it? No. But it's so simple. That transcription was amplified many times and sent out through a powerful loudspeaker located in a window in some building near the Campanile. Well, uh huh? And perhaps the cleverest part of the whole scheme was a time mechanism to start that phonograph at nine o'clock. It seems to me that that shot was heard after the chimes had stopped ringing. Of course, that shot was on the electrical transcription. It was recorded in the laboratory for the purpose of establishing the time of the crime at ten minutes after nine, when our murdering friend was known to have been driving up College Avenue with a certain popular co-ed. A very ingenious theory, Bill. But there's one thing you haven't explained. How could that improvised broadcast have been arranged by Miss Lillian Voyne? I have a good mind to let you have it. There's only one person who had the facilities and the location to arrange such a broadcast. And that person is Dr. C. Edson Hawley. There's only one thing the matter with your theory, Bill. You haven't a scrap of evidence to support it. Wait and see. There's that 45 you shot Brock with, for instance. And what about those fingerprints, Doctor? Did you have time to wipe those off? And what about the serial number? Perhaps that number has been filed off. You know, men of science have a method of bringing back serial numbers that have been filed off. Well, Bill, what's the program now? How about little John down at the city hall? Kine, I suppose, doesn't know of your visit here? No. I doped it all out myself. And I'm going to see that my paper gets full... Cr what's that you've got in your hand? Just glance behind yourself quickly, Bill. I won't move. Did you see it? See what? Those two test tubes piled beneath that pile of rubbish. What about them? Barrels of a shotgun, Bill. Aimed right at your chair. I've only to press this button to discharge both barrels. If you move, I'll let you have it. Well? You've got the drop on me. Very definitely so. Say, Doc, would you mind telling me the whole story? What is it you want to know, Bill? Suppose we start with the motive. The motive was self-preservation. It was an effort to combat, by the only means at my disposal, a blackmail plot that would have meant my ruination. That plot was engineered by Jennings and those two shyster lawyers. After Jennings was admitted to the university, his first move was to get acquainted with Anne Michaels. He did and finally married her. How he did that, I don't know. Perhaps she fell in love with him. Perhaps he knew that her father was a gambler and an ex-convict and forced her into the marriage. But he married her for just one purpose. He knew that I was interested in the girl. And he planned to blackmail me knowing that I was a fairly wealthy man. It was his intention to sue for a divorce and name me as correspondent. Well, that divorce case would have never reached court. No, not as long as I paid. But I knew it was in the offing. And that's why you killed Smythe. Smythe caught me in his office while I was searching for papers that might have any bearing on this case. I had to kill him. What about Brock? I counted on his keeping quiet, because he couldn't have aired his suspicions without incriminating himself. But Brock got panicky. He came to my office this afternoon, demanded $50,000. I whipped the gun out of my desk, shot him through the heart, and then tossed the gun down beside him. And those bullets, how did you work that? A week or so ago, I went to Lillian's apartment, stole the gun, fired two bullets out of it, and then returned the gun. 
And you used another gun to kill Janney? Yes, a 32 with a silencer. Then I put the bullets where they were found. So you admit you were going to frame her? I was going to build up a case against her founded on circumstantial evidence. No jury would have convicted her. Just enough of a case so she'd be convicted in the eyes of the world. Just enough evidence so that the police would lay off looking for the real murderer. Doc, you're a rat. Anything further you want to know, Bill? No, I guess that's about all. It's just as well that you have no more questions to ask. I'm tired of talking. What are you going to do now? First, I'm going to get your gun. All right. Come and get it. Bottled over to Doc Hawley's place. He stayed there a long time. And all of a sudden, Hawley comes running out with a sort of a crazy expression on his face. He stopped dead when he seen me and tried to pass it off by saying something about it being a nice night. Well, Bill ain't come out of there yet, and the doors are locked up for the night. Call the rat right run. Get the dead wagon. No, I better make the animals. Okay. All right, come on. Those windows, let some air in here. Well, right, you're alive and kicking. Boy, you gave me a scare that time. You don't know what it is. <coughs> it is to be scared. That crazy guy started a fire and some stuff. Yeah, I know. Gas like they used in the war. Come on. I'll take it easy. You're all in. Go get a stretcher. Yes. I don't want a stretcher. Ed. I'm all right. I'll be able to walk around in a minute. Hostile, ain't he, Chief? Yeah, hard to lick. But he'll go in the ambulance just the same. You won't get me in any ambulance. You may think you're all right, but it's the after effects we've got to look out for. See, come on, boys. Get him by the feet and shoulders. Take him out in the back. No, I'm all right. I... <coughs> Take him out. I'm all right. Wait a minute. Never mind. How'd you come to be up in that chemistry building? I had your trail since last night. You what? Had your trail. You're too conspicuous for things are happening. I figured you'd be in on it somewhere. They had. You haven't heard nothing like what I found out. I got all the dope on this bird, Holly. I know why he killed him and how. How'd you find that out? I wormed it out of him. Yeah? Well, we've got a committee out after him, and he ought to be at the station when we get there. I'll do a little worming myself. Thanks for the ride, boys. My girl lives down the block, and I'd like to see her. You big fathead. Hey, tell me how he rang those chimes. Take a look at the morning paper, Ed. That 